Oh my God, Corso is the best. Thanks, Reese. Welcome to ESPN College Football presented by Xfinity. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. The 23rd ranked Wake Forest Demon Deacons off to their best start in 13 years. Take on rival North Carolina State on a sunny Saturday in Winston-Salem. Welcome to the booth with Greg McElroy. I'm Dave Pash, Tom Luganbilt down on the field. Wake is one of the nice surprising stories in college football this year, Greg. Off to a 6-1 and one start. For them to get where they hope to, and that's a New Year's Six Bowl, they need a healthy quarterback. Jamie Newman, who was injured in their last game, expected to start in this game. I know you're a big fan. Well, I think he is the best-kept secret superstar in college football, physically gifted, his unbelievable arm talent, very accurate, and at 230-plus pounds, he's a very capable runner. Can negotiate in the pocket, can drive the ball down the field. I think he is sensational. Still a little bit raw, but I tell you what, he is going to be excellent and a big reason why this team has a chance to get to the New Year's Six. He's facing off, though, Tom, against a redshirt freshman quarterback for the Wolfpack. Well, he certainly is, and Devin Leary, the redshirt freshman, he's got all the arm talent you want to have. What he's got to learn to do is how to manage a game, how to run an offense, how to study tape, all the little things that go into being a great player under center. And he's going to get an opportunity today to be the guy for a full four quarters. They're running with him. He needs to prove to the staff that he can take this offense to the next level. And we're going to see Leary here momentarily because Wake won the toss and deferred. NC State will receive the ball. Dave Clawson, a National Coach of the Year candidate in a sixth season, the last four years, 28 and 18. They've won three straight bowl games. They beat Memphis in the Birmingham Bowl last year. And they're already bowl eligible. So first time in school history, four straight years bowl eligible. Been a rough season for Dave Doran, but a ton of injuries. They're coming off back-to-back nine-win seasons. But they have lost their top four cornerbacks, 11 starters in all to injury, have been hurt for NC State. It's a short kick fielded by Lassane on the 20, and he will not make it to the 25-yard line. The quarterback last year for NC State was Ryan Finley, and he's starting for the Cincinnati Bengals this week. NC State has started three different quarterbacks. Matthew McKay got the call to start 2019, started the first five games of the season. Bailey Hockman started the last two games, went one and one, beat Syracuse. And Devin Leary making his first career start, redshirt freshman quarterback for the Wolfpack. And off play action, rolling left here, and the pass on target might have been out of bounds. It was Thomas as we look at uh, Leary Richard freshman from Timber Creek High School in southern New Jersey two-time Gatorade player of the year in the Garden State and the last time a freshman quarterback started a game for NC State was Russell Wilson in 2008 of course Wilson finished up playing at Wisconsin here's another throw to the sideline a mezzi on the catch after the incompletion on first down and this is a game of six and Leary has great arm talent throws a really catchable football very accurate like Luke said though just a few minutes ago a little bit up and down with his decision making which is to be expected for a young quarterback but he's going up against a defense that's without a couple of great players themselves just needs to be smart with the football as NC State has been throughout the course of the first few games of the year. They are 112th in the country on third down, and this is going to be close. I think Thomas had enough to move the chains. Nasir Greer in coverage, and it is a first down for the Wolfpack. You know, Greg, when I was talking with Dave Doran in pregame, the one thing he said he loves about Devin Leary's physical attributes is that he can change his arm angle, and he can layer the football. He knows how to change it up versus a throw. He's not just a fastball pitcher. Leary on a half roll, and a nice pitch and catch there. Devin Carter, redshirt freshman receiver, gets seven yards. You like what you're seeing here? I do. I like the plan, too. You get Leary outside the pocket, simplify the read a little bit, use his athleticism, give him some quick, easy completions before he stretches the field here as the game moves along. Here's another freshman, Zonovan Wright, getting the carry, picking up the first down before he's knocked down at the 45-yard line. So redshirt freshman quarterback, your top two running backs are true freshmen. Zonovan Bam Knight, who Dave Doran told us is one of their leaders on offense, but 
And that's what it's come to. Your true freshmen are your leaders because of all the injuries. Yeah, freshman left tackle. I mean, it, this is a really young football team that has battled some adversity. Trent Penix in the game, and he's going to pitch it back. A flea flicker, and throwing it away is Leary. Carter was the intended receiver, but Wake Forest read that well as they were trying to take a shot. And there's that shot play. Talk about those quick, easy completions. You lull the defense to sleep. Boom, flea flicker. And a good job there by Leary. Sometimes the best play you can make as a quarterback is to throw it away. Don't make a bad play worse. And just live to play second down. Yeah, that's got to be encouraging for Dave Doran watching that. And in his first series as a starter, making the right decision. Play action here, Larry in trouble, and spun to the ground. At the 42-yard line, Travion Reed. Normally a backup replacing Luke Masterson in the starting lineup. He gets the sack. Trying to go with an RPO, and you're going to see pressure off the left-hand side. Larry thinks he can beat it as he tries to escape outside, but a nice job defensively by Red grabbing the shoulder and dragging down the quarterback for the sack. Wake Forest 16th in the country on third down defensively. And this is third and 13. Trying to set up a screen. It was almost picked off and then almost caught. Hines couldn't come down with it. And that was good defense by Jaquez Williams. It's a good job here. You're going to see him just kind of drop back and read eyes. As soon as he knows he can't get back, he sees that the ball is coming out. He sees the quarterback's eyes. Reads out of that rush and gets a hand on the football. Really nice job by Williams there. Sniffing out the underneath throw. Kendall Hilt, uh, Hinton is back. Trenton Gill will punt it for NC State. Gets off a good kick. And the fair catch made at the 13-yard line by Hinton. Wake Forest on offense and we come back. Wake Forest only lost this season, came against Louisville in a 62-59 game where quarterback Jamie Newman was injured on this play. Hurt his left shoulder, played one more play, then was replaced by Sam Hartman, who started the next game against Florida State. And Hartman was able to lead them to victory. But after a bye week, Newman is back as the starting quarterback for Wake from the 14-yard line. And they're going to run it. Cade Carney on first down gets maybe two or three. Let's introduce you to Jamie Newman, who is a redshirt junior. He's from Graham, North Carolina, which is about an hour east of here, just past Greensboro. Started the final four games last year after Sam Hartman was injured. And as mentioned, started the first six games this year before that left shoulder injury. But he is 10th in the country, number one in the ACC, as Newman carries it here for a couple in passing. Got 17 touchdowns, a touchdown pass in 10 consecutive games. The school record is 11. It's a remarkably special skill set. Being able to drive the ball down the field very accurately. So enjoyed watching him play this year. Third down and five. Newman to the air. Pressure coming. And the pass is on the money. First down out to the 28-yard line. Hinton on the grab. A pickup of nine. The ball just jumps out of his hand. And you see the numbers, obviously, Elite throwing the football, and that completion percentage would be much higher if there weren't for a few drops that he's dealt with. Swing pass here to Carney, who slipped. Turf monster tackle at the 27, a loss of one. No, you say the ball jumps out of his hand. I'm standing right behind him, and it, it's like a, a metal bat hitting a softball. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just bam. Effortless. Yes. On second down, Newman with guys around him defensively could not hit Surratt. Lewis Asus, who's got four and a half sacks on the year, had some pressure, so it brings up third down and 11. And the last time we saw this NC State defense, they were embarrassed by Boston College. Got to think they're going to be more aggressive, and Dave Huxtable is going to try to press the issue a little bit more with pressure and blitzes. Newman from the pocket again, hangs in there, throws complete. A first down out to the 43. Hinton again with the third down reception. They get 16 yards there. It's a beautiful combination. Two in-breaking routes working against coverage. It wasn't very tight there in the secondary. NC State has dealt with their fair share of issues at corner. It's going to be a very tough matchup 
against three receivers for Wake Forest that are excellent. Newman off play action, and it's incomplete. Broken up. You talked about how bad NC State was defensively last time we saw him against BC, but that was primarily defending the run. They gave up 429 rushing yards in a game, 429 to BC. Yeah, I think it's because they were a little bit too passive. But a lot of young guys in there, a lot of guys playing extensive action for the first time against an offense like BC. Didn't handle it well. Carney gets the carry on second and 10 and dragged down. Otherwise, he might still be running, but it's a gain of 11 and a first down. Jakeen Harris maybe saved the touchdown for the Wolfpack. It's a really nice cutback by Carney. You saw presence upfield by the NC State defender. He slips right underneath it for a nice, nice game. Newman off play action, firing one back shoulder. And was he inbounds? No. Scotty Washington, who's a big body, 6'5", 225, could not get a foot down on a dart thrown by Newman. It's really close. Look at this left foot. Yeah, it looks like that right foot lands out of bounds just before the left foot gets down. Good catch, but just not enough room between him and the sideline. Give Malik Dunlap, the defender, a little credit there, too. Carney running to the left and picks up two to the 45-yard line. Boy, it's interesting just watching how they go about the handoff, right? First of all, you got to figure out who's got the ball, but it takes time to develop. And then when Newman doesn't hand it off, you see that NC State players around him defensively, and it doesn't seem to bother him at all. So tough to defend because it forces you to declare defensively. Here he is on third and eight, and another strike for a first down. Scotty Washington on the catch. Three first down on this here as uh, you look at the fewest time in the country between plays and Wake Forest go at 21.6 seconds. Got an injured player here. It is Laurel Murchison for North Carolina State. A guy they cannot afford to lose and they've lost a lot on D. ESPN College Football is presented by Xfinity. Get the ultimate in-home Wi-Fi experience with Xfinity XFi. The Sutton Sports Performance Center, the latest athletic facility that opened up in September, 89,000 square feet, about $36 million. We've had the privilege of seeing some new facilities this year, places that maybe you wouldn't normally think have beautiful facilities, Northwestern, Illinois, South Carolina, and, and now Wake Forest. We've been treated to several, and. What I like about Wake Forest is it's really functional. Everything's right there. Everything that you need as a student athlete within only a, a stone's throw from your dorms, from the dining hall, and everything you need as a football player. It's excellent. From the 35-yard line, Newman over the middle. Got Scotty Washington, and he stretches to the 20-yard line. 15 more yards. We got a tour from Dave Clawson yesterday at the new facility, and and normally the players they get, they're trying to develop. They get them there and coach them up. And you can see the growth of uh, Newman here is going to keep it at the 15. Outside of the 10, heading for the end zone. Touchdown, Jamie Newman. Impressive opening drive by Wake. You started the telecast, Greg, saying this is a player that people need to know about. And, man, did he look good on that first possession. He's a star. So accurate, so versatile, great recognition, and an excellent burst to the end zone to cap off their first drive. Skiba on for the point after. And it's 7-0, Wake Forest midway through the first as the Demon Deacons try to get to 7-1. The last time was 2006, went to the Orange Bowl that year. Orange Bowl reps are here to watch this Demon Deacon team. We're off to a great start. Our ABC primetime game is Memphis and SMU in the AAC. Both teams rank Mustangs 8-0. Last time they were 9-0. Eric Dickerson, Craig James, and the Pony Express back in 82. Who wins this game, Greg? 
I'm going to go SMU. Uh, I think SMU, with their ability to not just beat you through the air with Shane Bouchelle on downfield throws, they have an excellent running back in Jones, I think can make some plays against that Memphis defense. Another short kickoff here. Lassine elects to return it, and he fumbles the ball loose inside the five yard line. Wake Forest looked like that they jumped on it first inside the five. DeAndre Delaney was down there for the Wolfpack. It is NC State ball, a colossal gaff, or excuse me, Wake Forest ball after a colossal gaff by NC State. And coming out of there with it, Kenneth Dix. Great hit on the ball carrier. That was Delaney who poked it free. Just a great hit, squaring him up, get your head in front of the ball carrier. His helmet hits right on the football and the ball goes flying. It's a great job by that Wake Forest kickoff team. First down at the two after the turnover. Wake already up 7-0. Carney wrapped up in the backfield by Brock Miller. Loss of three. This is a huge stand for NC State's defense. First drive, Wake Forest went right down the field. Then they're put in a really difficult spot. Sudden change on their own five-yard line. Backs against the wall with a redshirt freshman quarterback making his first career start. It's really tough to climb out of a 14-0 hole. So holding Wake Forest to a field goal here would be huge for the Wolfpack. Well, Greg, you got these two big receivers on both sides versus very inexperienced corners in the red zone. Great opportunity for a jump ball here. Newman to throw, got a receiver open. Out of touchdown, Frudenthal. Nobody covered the tight end. It's a great catch by Frudenthal. But how about the throw up and over the defender? Jamie Newman drops it in the bucket. And Frudenthal reels it in. Excellent play on the Spider 2. And yet Brandon Chapman, another tight end open. He could have thrown to either guy in the secondary. And it's 14-0 already, number 23, Wake Forest. It starts with special teams. Delaney with the big hit, recovered by Hicks. And then Newman pays it off, finding Frudenthal from five yards away. Touchdown, Wake. Touchdown run and then a touchdown pass for Jamie Newman off the turnover forced by the special teams. And you see the leadership there of Newman going down and talking to all the guys on the bench. 14 zip wake. Deacon seven and one. They still have to go to Clemson. This will be a touchback. Let's check in with Matt Berry in the studio. Not a lot of SEC teams playing today. Alabama, LSU, both off. Of course, they play next week. Tuscaloosa, one versus two. NC State ball down 14 nothing, And they're going to run it here. But only a gain of two as Knight was stuffed. Let's go back to that touchdown. Just a beautiful spider two. Why banana with a snag? That's for you, Coach Gruden. Beautiful throw by Newman over the top. Frudenthal reels it in. Just excellent design and perfect execution for the Wake Forest offense. Not a lot of pressure on the shoulders of Devin Leary making his first career start at quarterback. Swing pass here. Out past the 30-yard line, Penix. 
And about a yard shy of the first down. Are you tell this story? This is about you. <laughs> yeah, speaking of Frudenthal, he was a resident of South Lake, Texas. His dad's in the oil business. He ended up going to high school in Virginia. But he came and saw me play in the state championship in 2005. I said, I said, all right, be honest. What grade were you in there, Jack? Were you, you know, ninth grade or so? He goes, no, Greg, I was, uh, I was in third grade when that went on, and that made me feel really old. But uh, nice to have an, a friendly dragon connection. Happy for his success and what he's been able to do here at Wake. About time you feel old. I mean, I feel <laughs> old working with you. Oh, he was in third grade, and I was a senior in high school. Never good. Out of the Wildcat, Knight on third down, a much-needed pickup. Out to the 36. This is an imperative drive for NC State to kind of get things going. They had a nice first drive. They got their quarterback started, Devin Leary. A couple easy completions. Their defense has struggled the last couple times out, so they need to put something together here to find an answer to what Wake's done offensively here in the first few minutes of this game. So fresh set of downs on the North Carolina State 36-yard line. Going to be a pass play here for Leary. With time, throwing it deep. Look out! And it's intercepted by Amari Henderson, his third pick of the year. Now, NC State is not a team that turns the ball over an awful lot. Devin Leary here not recognizing how deep the corner was playing on the post route. Look how far over the top Henderson is. That's a redshirt freshman mistake. When the corner has that much room, you can't throw the post. That's a check down, you'll get back to it. And that, that's an unfortunate mistake from the redshirt freshman. That's just predetermining right there from a young player that's got to process through the offense better than that. And you saw that graphic there, just they don't do this very often. They don't turn it over. Here's a jet sweep to Hinton, and a penalty flag comes in as Hinton got smoked. Tanner Ingle for NC State. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 10. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. I mean, this is the kind of stuff when you're already shorthanded, your forces are depleted because of injury, turnovers, and then, I mean, that was a brutal-looking face mask. Man, wow. Dangerous play. Just glad everything's okay with Hinton, but Engel, of course, not intentional there by any stretch. Got to get the guy down as best you can. Got to aim a little lower as you throw that hand out. Newman going to hand it off to true freshman Kenneth Walker. They really like him. Fearless. Runs between the tackles there and gets about six yards. He's averaging almost nine yards a carry. Wake Forest has great skill at wide receiver and at running back. Here he is again trying to find a hole. This time he's bottled up. But look at him. He won't go down. Finally, uh, Xavier Lias, who outweighs Walker by about 50 pounds, was able to wrestle him to the ground. A one-yard pickup, bringing up third and three. And Wake Forest so far on third down has been excellent. Three for three here in the first ten minutes of this ball game. Pass play. Newman setting up, lobbing it. Flag down as the pass is incomplete. He's going for Hinton. Holding. Defense, number 21, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. So Stephen Griffin commits the penalty. NC State was going to be off the field. Instead, Wake is in NC State territory again. Already leading 14 zip. Yeah, you're going to see it right here. Pretty obvious as he almost tackles Hinton to the ground as he releases for the corner route. It's a good call by the back judge. Yet another big penalty, though, on NC State to keep this drive alive. It's either that or a touchdown. Newman throwing, and he could not hit hit. Man, he, he had something on that ball. It's the one area where I think Newman can grow is he almost has too much arm for his own good. He throws a fastball to Garrett Cole every time. I mean, he throws heat. And as a result, he's been subject to a couple drops this year, even by a really excellent receiving core. So I think learning just how to adjust the pace and with which he throws, depending on how far downfield the throw needs to be, that's 
perhaps the next part of his development. But man, he is a special talent throwing the football. Wolfpack being, bringing pressure. Newman rolling away from it. And an on-target pass to Hinton who breaks the tackle inside the 25. They get 17 yards on that pass play. Newman leading the receiver beautifully. It was a beautiful route by Hinton to create that separation. Wake going up tempo. Play action. Newman wide open. And what a catch at the five by Chapman. First and goal at the four-yard line for Wake Forest. Chapman made it harder than it needed to be, Greg. Man, that was an excellent catch. Staying with it. You see the ball bouncing around a little bit, but secured. Excellent catch by the tight end. Run play as Walker is smacked. Met in the backfield by Aleem McNeil. You said earlier that NC State couldn't afford to get down 14-0, had to hold them to a field goal. And here we are in a situation where if it's 21-0 in the first quarter with a lack of firepower and injuries for NC State, look out, Newman powering his way to the goal line. They stack him up, but there's some push by Newman, and he's in the end zone for the touchdown. It's 6-4, 2-30. They could not keep him from hitting pay dirt. Yes, that left shoulder's fine. Two touchdowns on the ground, one through the air for Jamie Newman. And Skiba makes it 21 0. Couple of early turnovers for the Wolf Pack have them in a very deep hole as Amari Henderson reels in the interception. And Jamie Newman takes it the other direction and finishes in the end zone to give them a 21-point lead. And back here, this could be a touchback on the kickoff. Lesane, who coughed it up earlier, not taking a risk. Well, NC State's down 21 0, and here's a big reason why. They have had a ton of injuries. They played the second most freshman of the country next to Clemson. And, you know, Clemson, they have freshmen that are better than a lot of people's seniors, and they've played so many guys because they've been in blowouts. But, I mean, these are key guys that NC State has lost and, and really can't do without. And especially at premier positions, too. I mean, corner now in college football is a premier position to think that you are relying on your fifth best corner to be your one and moving guys from safety to corner it's a really really tall task the stoppage of play here far offense number 71 five yard penalty first down it's the left guard joe skullthorpe they they just are coming apart here turnovers penalties i mean coming off a of bye week 30 penalty yards, two turnovers, leading to 14 Wake Forest points. They just can't make those self-inflicted mistakes against a team with this much firepower offensively. True freshman Jordan Houston in it, running back, and he's going to lose about four. Run down by Kamara. Look at the penetration there in the backfield, Greg. I mean, NC State just getting beat off the football. And that's probably the biggest difference that I've seen with NC State this year. Yeah, they've lost some key pieces on defense naturally, but the one area of their team that was very reliable the last few years was that offensive line. Bradbury there at center, a first-round pick, a physical team, a tough team. And up front, along the offensive line, they haven't been anywhere near as good. That position needs to solidify, especially for a young quarterback. Another run on second and 18, and what a vicious tackle. A huge hit by Bassey on the running back, Houston. Wake is balling on both sides, and he's unblocked. I mean, that's that's the guy that, that you have to account for in the run game. This offensive line never gets to the second level. And as a result, Bassey is able to bring down the ball carrier behind the line of scrimmage. Can't have free runners 
on stretch zone plays. So back to back negative plays for NC State. Now they go empty on third down and 19. Leary's pass overthrown. Incomplete. Kerry Angeline was in the vicinity, but rough start for the Wolfpack. Yeah, Dave Doran's got to settle this group down because because of their youth, they don't have a lot of great player leadership. Guys are kind of figuring themselves out, and it's difficult if you don't have a lot of experience to step up and be that alpha. Dave Doran's going to have to settle this young group down. So there's plenty of football left. Just got to take it one play at a time and quit trying to do too much offensively and defensively. Gill the punt. Gets rid of it quickly. Line drive to Hinton. Has some running room. But can't make the first guy miss. So Wake will have to start inside the 35-yard line. This a fumble on special teams, which led to a Wake Forest touchdown, a 14-0 lead. Yeah, I mean, piece of cake, touchdown, starting first and 10, or first and goal from the two, and then you have the interception on the post by Henderson. Jamie Newman in this offense goes right down the field, eight plays, and stretches their lead to 21. Jamie Newman has been excellent today, both on the ground and through the air, being smart with the football and negotiating defenders, and being the playmaker that he's been all season. Good to see him back healthy. Newman to throw, and that is caught by Surratt. And Sage Surratt able to get the first down. That's his 54th catch of the year, number two in the country. This guy's an incredible athlete in high school. He became the first player in the state of North Carolina to win player of the year in both football and basketball. And that year, Kobe White who's now in the NBA in a top 10 pick. He beat him out. We got an injured player for NC State. Time down as we get ready to start the second quarter, but officially it's still the first quarter. No time on the clock. NC State backed up as you look at Devin Leary, redshirt freshman quarterback, lined up about four yards deep in the end zone. So referee uh, Trey Blake just announcing the one on time down. Trent Penix is the running back. 21-0 Wake Forest. Penix able to get out of the end zone. He got pushed back, but he did get all the way out with the football. Drilled by Dion Bergen. It was really close. You see the penetration. Ball is out. So no threat of a safety there. Man, this offensive line so far for NC State having a tough day against a disruptive Wake Forest front. All right, now they got to take the ball, go all the way down to the other two-yard line. Let's check in with Matt Berry while they're doing that. That is a big man running. <laughs> See, well, he had 94. Why didn't they go speed option? Pitch it to big 94 so we can get a big man touchdown and a big man touchdown celebration. Look at that. Nine of the 16 plays for NC State in the first quarter. Zero or negative yards. They just lost a yard on first down. Almost a safety on first down. So I'm sure Wake licking its chops here on second down. And field position's killing them, guys. I mean, they cannot give Devin Leary any worse of a situation to start off. Yeah, and it's on the offensive line. They got to get some push up front against the Demon Deacons. Going to throw it here, and Leary's pass is knocked away. That was inside, and boy, if Bassey got his head around, he might have picked that off. Mezzi, the intended receiver. Yeah, it was late, and it was inside. You see a Mezzi turn and try to make a play on the football. This is just a redshirt freshman reminding you he's got to anticipate and you have to on an outbreaking route miss outside. Can't miss inside. That's a dangerous game, but fortunate it wasn't intercepted. Third down and 11. Leary stepping up, throwing a deep ball and almost intercepted again by Henderson. Picked one off in the first quarter. 
Hines the intended receiver. But Henderson had a better crack at that than Hines did. That was a good look on the seam route up the field, but an excellent job by Henderson, the corner, converging on that seam and vacating his outside zone, coming in, collapsing on the seam, and making a play on the football. Almost had his second interception. He's had a great start to this game, Amari Henderson. Just watching the punter, Trenton Gill, he's looked down a couple times to make sure that he's not standing out of bounds because they're snapping it from the one-yard line. You know, normally you're back about 15 yards. He's back only about 11 for the punt. He got rid of it quick, which he did. And here's the return by Hinton. He's at the 35. And somersaults to the 28-yard line. We mentioned that Sage Surratt of Wake Forest has a brother, Chaz, who plays at North Carolina. The parents, Brandy and Kevin, are here now. They'll end up in Chapel Hill later for the North Carolina-Virginia game. Sage and Chaz. Chaz was a quarterback, now playing linebacker for North Carolina. Well, Brandy and Kevin have been in the stands together for every game their sons have played except once. September 28th, dad had to go to Boston to watch Sage win at BC. Mom had to go to Carolina Clemson, and North Carolina almost won that game. Went for two at the end. Did not convert, and Clemson won in a thriller. Wake going to run the ball here as Walker breaks a tackle. And they finally get to him at the 13, otherwise it's a touch. So here's earlier today, the parents arriving. Wake Forest, but they've got their North Carolina gear ready. They're going to change in the car, I guess, <laughs> uh, on the way down 40 East, that 82-mile drive to Memorial, Keenan Memorial Stadium in Chapel Hill. Here's Walker again on first down inside the 10. There's a Mom Brandy greeting Sage on the Deacon Walk this morning. It's awesome. It's so great that they can go to both games and I'll be honest with you man I mean Sage Surratt's been outstanding Chaz Surratt's done a heck of a job at linebacker he was a big reason why they almost pulled off that Clemson upset they finally figure out that play defensively Walker swallowed by Peyton Wilson so a loss of about five third down and nine Dave that slow action in the backfield it's created so many problems for NC State on defense because you have to choose are we going to hit the quarterback or are we going to hit the running back and up until that moment they've chosen wrong third down one of the few times we've seen the look back from this yeah. quick uh, offense that's been at light speed here so far. Keep an eye on Hinton. He's got outside leverage against that safety. Instead they run Walker and he's leveled at the seven so Wake just kept it on the ground there. Ingle with a good stick. Finally NC State's defense able to get off the field although I guess they got off the field on, on a punt and it was fourth and one but a little too late now. Needed stops when Wake got in the red zone twice in the first quarter after turnovers, getting the short field. This is the longest active streak in FBS. 23 consecutive made field goals by Nick Skiba. And it's 24 in a row. His last miss came against Notre Dame in September of 2018. 24-0, Wake Forest. This season for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities. Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. First Saturday of November. The initial college football playoff rankings will be announced on Tuesday. It will be interesting to see where these Demon Deacons are. Six and one on the season, ranked 23rd in the AP poll. Still have to go to Clemson, but really get a chance to win 10 or 11 games this year as uh, that was a touchback. Come out to the 25. Let's go back to that third down for Wake Forest. He's got exactly what he wants with the matchup here. Look at the leverage by the safety. It's outside, and he's got Hinton working a post. And this post is going to be open. If Jamie Newman looks in that direction, you see him see it a little bit late. 
Once that post comes open, hey, I'm sorry, man. I should have fed you. That was exactly what you look for, though, as a quarterback. Leverage in the red zone, and he had a lot of space in the middle of the field. Missed opportunity there by the excellent quarterback. Devin Leary going to throw it here on first down, and the catch is made by Carter. And Carter close to a first down. Here's Matt. The catch is made by number 88, Devin Carter. He's forced out by number four, Amari Henderson, along number 58, Chase Fredrado. First down, we back. It's been a long rivalry, Syracuse and B.C. I don't want to hear it about the Iron Bowl. I understand it's not that. I get it, but I think it's a rivalry of broadcasters. Tessa Torres exactly. against Pash and McDonough and Tarico. What other rivalry is it? Yeah, it's a it's a broadcaster rivalry. It, it's the guys with the brains rivalry. Yeah. What's Eastern Kentucky's rival, Luke's? That pass caught by Angeline, a first down in Wake Territory. A nice throw from Leary there. Notice how Tom went silent when he's <laughs> hey, Kentucky. Hey, rivalry. first of all, yeah, yeah. You don't ever set me up there broadcasting rivalry. <laughs> now you throw it out while the ball's in the air, huh? You can't retort that way. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I've learned. Here's Houston inside the 40. Good drive as Tom looks up what retort means in the dictionary. Yeah. Down yeah. to 36 right now for NC State. The Harvard of Central New York. <laughs> That's right. Oh, by the way, our boy Devin Leary is playing pretty good. You want to pay attention? Yeah. Okay. It's a nice drive. <laughs> Here comes a, uh -oh. a flea flicker, and Leary in trouble. Wake was all over that. Leary got tackled by Rondell Bothroyd as he tried to get rid of the football. Yeah, it almost happened a little too fast because Wake didn't react fast enough. They were kind of in the right place at the right time. If this was a little bit more slow developing, they might have been able to react to that reverse. And then to the pitch back to the quarterback. A good job, though, by Leary. They sniffed it out. Don't make it worse. Throw it away. They run it on third and one. Houston makes a nice cut to get the first down. Jordan Houston, true freshman from Waldor, Maryland. They have two true freshmen running back. We've been watching Zonovan Knight a lot in this game. And now Jordan Houston getting some reps. Yeah, these running backs aren't very big for NC State. They are talented. Uh, but they're not a group that's just going to run and get downhill, shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. They're going to be make you miss wiggle guys. Yeah, they're better on the perimeter, and that's what they're trying to teach these guys. You've got to be more comfortable running between the tackles. Larry to throw on first down, off the mark. Went for Hines. Tabari Hines, a grad transfer from Wake Forest. How weird is that? Played all those years here at Wake and transfers to NC State. Ended up actually at Oregon to start and then got hurt last year. But was it Wake for three years? 24 starts as a member of the Demon Deacons. Out in the flat to Carter. Going to be third down and long here for NC State. You see Hines might be the recipient of this third down opportunity. You see how he's done as a Wake Forest wide receiver. He had some really nice games against NC State. So understandable why Dave Doran would want to bring him to Raleigh to join his squad. Could be four down territory here for NC State. Leary, long throw. That was well defended, but a flag is down. Basham was there for Wake Forest and on Devin Leary and might have gotten penalized. Foul. Yep. Roughing the passer. Defense number nine. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Basham. Basham was coming off that right edge. And you see him hit the quarterback in the head. And that's what you have to do. They're trying to protect the quarterback at all costs. You can't hit him high and you can't hit him low. There, Basham, as he tried to knock down the pass. Hits Leary in the head. I know most defensive guys would be rolling their eyes, but by the letter of the law, that is the correct call. Here's a pitch to Lassane inside the 10. He stumbles. 
And got the first down, though. It's going to be first and goal for NC State at the three-yard line. It's a huge drive right here, yeah. Greg. Just from a confidence perspective for NC State to drive the length of the field after virtually being non-existent on offense here in the first half. And they've got back to the quick underneath passing yep. game. Not trying to do too much. Don't put too much on your quarterback's shoulders. And for the first time, it feels like the offensive line's answered the challenge. They've been able to run the ball a lot more efficiently these last few plays. They fake the jet sweep, and wide open in the end zone is Angeline. Touchdown, North Carolina State. It's a really nice design here by offensive coordinator Des Kitchings. They just had success on the jet sweep, so this time they come back, they fake the jet sweep. They release that tight end to the back of the end zone and find him for the touchdown. Excellent response from NC State. Had to have it there, because if they didn't, this game could have gotten out of hand. Can they get a stop, though? That's the question. Down 17, can their defense give the offense a little bit of a breather and get the ball back for the quarterback? ESPN College Football. Brought to you by Pizza Hut, official pizza of college football. Order now at PizzaHut.com. No one out pizzas the hut. Those are the four quarterbacks that are now starting in the NFL. Ryan Finley replacing Andy Dalton with the Bengals. Jacoby Brissett replacing Andrew Luck, who retired. Russell Wilson, of course, played the one year at Wisconsin after uh, battling Mike Glennon here at NC State. Glennon, a backup of the Raiders. And then first but not least, Philip Rivers, who is a future Hall of Famer. Terrific player here for NC State. Drafted by the New York Giants. Correct. And traded for Eli Manning. Fifth overall. I believe it was fourth. Ah, close enough. Manning went one. Larry Fitzgerald went three, by the way, that year. Hinton touchback comes out to the 25. If you look at this Wake Forest offense, it's all predicated off run action. They put the ball into the belly of the running back, and look at the influence it has on the second-level defenders. It allows guys to work in space over the middle. Nice job here on the seam route, and a great catch, too, by Chapman. And then finally, look at the influence on the right side of that defense. Throws it right over the top to Frudenthal, who reels it in. Jamie Newman has been excellent today. Very accurate. Has been decisive in the run game as well. It's been fun to watch him operate and the impact he has with some of that run action against those defenders for NC State. Newman has NFL potential at quarterback for Wake as he throws another strike to Surratt out to the 37. Can you name another quarterback from that uh, 2004 draft uh, that was picked in the mid-teens and has won a couple Super Bowls? Hmm, 2004, that would be Ben Roethlisberger. They would. Good. Come on. Newman's got some Roethlisberger qualities, right? Big body, hard to get to the ground. He put some touch on that ball. Surratt just couldn't come up with it. Well defended by Dunlap. He's made some good plays. And second and ten now for the Wolfpack. I think Newman oh, is. Excuse me. I think Newman is a slightly less physically imposing version of Cam Newton. I really believe that. Now Cam burst onto the scene in 2010, won a national championship, won a Heisman. If you see Newman, I mean he is Newman is 6'4", 230, about yep. 30 pounds lighter than Cam. Maybe not quite as explosive in the run game, but he's got a huge arm. He's a raw talent. I think he's much more accurate than Cam. I agree. I you think you he's look more at, accurate than yeah. Cam. You look at the ball placement, everywhere he's put it today, it's been in favor of the receiver. And you're, the beauty of it is if you're Dave Clawson, you get this guy for another year. On third down, Surratt with a catch. And forward progress where he initially caught it should be enough for a first down. Let's see where they mark it. And it is a first down to the 46-yard line. I think an NFL scout is going to just fall in love with Jamie Newman. Uh, I think he's a first-round pick. Just can't wait for more of the world to find out about how capable he is. Carney gets the carry into NC State territory for a six-yard run. And you look at his release, 
he's a little like Cam. You look at him side by side, look at the ball in phase. Look where it is behind the head. It's not really high. It's a little bit more of a three-quarter with a low elbow release. Very similar to Cam. Well, he is accurate, man. I mean, almost every throw is there is a flag down in the backfield as he hits Surratt is on the money. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face. Defense number 11. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. It's on Peyton Wilson, another penalty by NC State. Well, great. You'll see the pressure over here on the left hand side. He was blitzing, and you see his left hand get up, and you see also the, hand, the head of McGinn. Go back. That's a good call by the official. Sixth penalty on NC State. Meanwhile, Wake Forest is the second least penalized team in the country. Only 28 penalties on the year. And one so far in this game. Newman back to throw. Lobs it. Hinton got it inside the five. You talk about touch. It was there from Newman. First and goal as he drops it into the bucket. It's a beautiful throw. Slightly underthrown, but Hinton makes a nice back hip catch. What an effort, too, to try to score. Carney stood up, lost a yard. It'll be second and goal. Lewis Asus, who was injured earlier, is back on the field and made the tackle. I think that's where Hinton's different than, than Surratt in the sense that he can create that wiggle and that separation. So where if the ball's not perfect, you got some space to work with to make an adjustment. Man, you guys are tough critics. I mean, it's a pretty good throw. No, no it, it is a good slightly throw. Slightly underthrown. Yeah. I mean, we, when you're as good as Jamie Newman, you expect perfection. So slightly underthrown, but it's still good. Still a nice throw for sure. That's Carney motioning to the top of your screen. Somebody's got to get over there for NC State. Now Surratt comes in motion. They roll the other way, and it's a touchdown. Frudenthal's got two. Most points in a first half this season for Wake Forest. Jamie Newman responsible for four touchdowns, two running, two through the air. Good response by the Demon Deacons after NC State got on the board. Skiba makes it 31-7. A great design by Warren Ruggiero. Faking the jet sweep to your best wide receiver, Sage Surratt. And then sneaking Frudenthal into the end zone for the second time as the Deacons extend their lead. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Xfinity with Greg McElroy and Tom Luganville, Dave Pash here in Winston-Salem. Wake Forest in front, 31-7. Deacons trying to get to 7-1 for the first time in 13 years. And they're at Clemson in two weeks. Might be an interesting game. Lassane on the return, up to the 22. Here's Matt Berry. A lot of people were interested in how Michigan would play this week after the huge win against Notre Dame. So far so good for the Wolverines of Maryland. And good run here by Houston out in the open field. Break and tackles and finally thrown down at the 48 yard line. That was a great run. Almost 24 yards. It's a beautiful run and decisive too. He sees that that opening in the hole up front, he immediately, instead of trying to stretch it to the perimeter, he cuts it upfield. That's what they want to see from these running backs. I'm telling you, these running backs at NC State are going to be pretty good here in a couple years. Young group, but a lot of talent. 
Two true freshmen, a redshirt freshman. Here's a pass play by Leary. Long throw, and it's caught. A mezzi at midfield. Wrapped up there by Henderson. Pickup of six. At least they've got some continuity here, Greg, in terms of an offense. They got some creativity. They're running it. Got some balance and sustain. Keeping the ball away from Wake more than anything. Right. Problem is, those two turnovers early were just killer. Amezi tackled short of the line to gain by Bassey. The first five drives, they had 11 yards. And a turnover on after it was 7 0 on the kickoff. And Wake recovered the ball at the two yard line and scored two plays later. Then on the next possession, there was an interception, led to another Wake touchdown. Now it's third and one for NC State. They'll run it, and it's a first down and more for Penix inside the 30 yard line. Gain of 20 on third and one. And a good job on the offensive line. Look at how they work to the second level. The center, Grant Gibson, he finds that linebacker that's about to make the play. He peels off of the guy he was going to block, takes care of business there, and allows for the conversion. Leary caught inside the 25 yard line by Hines. Well defended by Taylor. Nearing four and a half to go here in the half. But Greg, one of the things Devin Leary's got to do is he's got to be decisive because he's got a bit of that hitch in his release where he telegraphs the throw, so he can't afford to be late. It's his first career start. He had thrown 41 passes before today and almost threw a pick. They jumped the route. Henderson, man, he is a ball hawk. Three interceptions on the season, one today, almost had one on the last drive and was close to getting one here. Yeah, and Luke's mentioned that long kind of wind-up delivery on those short throws, and they've thrown a bunch of them these last couple drives. Allows those defenders to see when that ball releases. As soon as he opens those hands away from each other, the defender can trigger, and that's exactly what he did there. Almost made a play on the football. Leary on third and five. Blitz is picked up with the passes. Knocked down. See what Dave Doran does here. Probably just bring on the kicking team, try to get it back to a 21-point deficit, and that's what he will do. He's got a good kicker in Christopher Dunn, who at one point had made 19 consecutive field goals. One back to last year. He's missed three times this year. Career long of 49. This will be a 40-yard attempt. And that is perfect. So, NC State back within 21, late in the half. Taco Bell celebrating student section and passionate fans like these. Awarding the Live Moss student section of the year. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. Or get the committee's attention by using hash, hashtag Live Moss student section contest. Not to cheer about for Wake's Forest fans. Six and one record. Fourth time in school history. They are bowl eligible for the fourth straight year. First time in school history. And they've got a 21-point lead. This will be a touchback. It'll come out to the 25, which means we have an opportunity for our Aflac trivia question. Aflac. Here's Dave Clawson, the head coach of Wake Forest. He played college football at Williams College, Division III in Massachusetts. He is one of six Power Five head coaches who played Division Three <laughs> football. Can you name the other five? How about this? Can, can you name, name one? one? Can you name one? Matt, right. Matt Campbell, Iowa yeah, State. Yeah, Matt Campbell. I got him. All right, where'd he play? He played at Mountain Union. Yeah. All right. Yep. That's all you got. That's yeah. all I got. That's all I got. I'm done. I'll see you, you guys next week. I, that was, I, thought, uh, I got nothing I thought else. the trivia question was going to be, what is the greatest broadcasting rivalry? There's some big names, by the way, on this list. I, I know one other one. Tom Herman. I'm not going to tell you. Newman throwing deep. And, oh, my goodness, I don't know what happened there. Brandon Chapman was wide open. I'm going to try one more. Joe Moorhead at Mississippi State? No. No. That's no, but good. you're right about Tom Herman. So Tom Herman played at Cal Lutheran. Dan right. Mullen, Ursinus in Pennsylvania. Tom Allen at 
Aranatha Baptist in Wisconsin. Since when is Samford D3? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, Jimbo, so they, last year uh, that they were D3 is when Jimbo Fisher gotcha, played Gotcha. Okay. Well, that's a trick question. Newman, his arm may have gotten hit there in the pass incomplete, so third down and ten. Jimbo was the D3 player of the year that year that he wow. played for Sanford. Big third down here for NC State's defense. Got a little momentum here. Jamie Newman's been perfect throwing in third down. Well, he was very fortunate on that last play. He hit his throwing hand on the helmet of the defender. That's dangerous, man. Yeah. Really tough. Can NC State get off the field? Newman has time. Over the middle, incomplete. But here come flags. Chapman, the intended receiver. Harris was all over him. Another penalty on NC State. That's the seventh. A yeah, ton of contact there over the middle of the Pass field. Interference. Defense, number 39. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, Jakeen Harris has been a guy actually singled out by Dave Doran and his defensive coordinator, Dave Huxtable, saying they're really excited about this young man's upside. Their man-to-man -man coverage against the tight end is always difficult, but a little bit too much contact. Easy call for the back judge. So sixth penalty on NC State. Wake with all of its timeouts remaining. They're going to run Walker here. Picks up three yards before James Smith Williams makes the stop. It's funny as you look at James Smith Williams get up. He is uh, listed at 265 pounds. When he came to NC State, he weighed 195. Think about that. He's gained 70 pounds in four years. Went from a DB to a D lineman. Newman running straight ahead, picks up a couple. Let's show you the metamorphosis of uh, James Smith Williams from uh, David Banner to the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> it's amazing, man. I mean, that and that speaks to this program and why they've had their struggles this year. It's a developmental program where they identify qualities and traits and then mold you into the player that you're eventually going to be. So they do a great job of that. And relying on youth is not something that's ever going to be a real strength for NC State. You know, bench is 420 and squat 620 pounds. Another strike thrown by Newman to Surratt into NC State territory to the 48 yard line. Surratt's got seven catches already and targeted nine times. NC State's going to have to start rolling coverage to the boundary. They've isolated 14 Surratt, which would be to the top of your screen, on number 24, the redshirt freshman Malik Dunlap, and they have not given him any help. I mean, he's just one-on-one, -on -one, and it's a mismatch right now. And you have to feel if he continues to get one-on-one, -on -one, you have to think that Surratt is going to set up a double move down the field on a hitch-and-go or slant-and-go. Walker gets the carry, sweeping to the right. And stacked up at the 48-yard line, so no gain, maybe a half yard. Asus was there to lead the charge defensively for NC State. Don't forget tonight on ABC, it is SMU and Memphis, our primetime game. Big one in the American Conference. SMU unbeaten on the year. Two minutes to go here. Wake with all of its timeouts. Another run play. Walker spins away from the initial tackle attempt. And then Ingle stops forward progress after a two-yard gain. Wake's going to be very mindful of that clock, knowing that NC State still has three timeouts at their disposal as well. They'll be smart with the football. and Don't give it back to NC State with any additional time. Well, NC State on third down defensively not been good. Wake is five of seven. They've converted on penalties as well by the Wolfpack. This is third and eight. Newman with a ton of time and hit with a nice catch in traffic for a first down. Eight of 14. Well, that was a beautiful throw and catch. In traffic, hitting, hanging on to it. 
Timeout called by North Carolina State with 52 seconds to go. Timeout. Let's go to Matt NC Berry State in the studio. Their first of the half, 30 second timeout. All right, Matt, what are you guys looking forward to in that Georgia-Florida game? We've seen Florida in person, and I know obviously you guys watch a lot of Georgia take. I'm looking forward to seeing Georgia get back on track. I feel like the narrative of their team not being a good team is greatly exaggerated. And Jake Fromm being just an average quarterback. Lugs, I feel like there's been a lot of negativity ever since that South Carolina game surrounding yeah. this Georgia offense. But I think they're going to put their best foot forward today and play a really nice game against a really good Florida team. Well, we've got to acknowledge, too, just how many new faces are around Jake Fromm for the first time in his tenure there at Georgia that are still kind of gelling and, and coming along. And, and at some point or another, they're going to have to put it all together. Wake Forest by 21, looking for more here at the end of the half. Newman, again, a ton of time, dumps it off to Hinton, who makes two defenders miss. And Kendall Hinton from Durham, North Carolina, converted quarterback. Dave Clawson, uh, the head coach, told us he reminds him of Brian Westbrook, who played for the Eagles and played at Villanova when Clawson was coaching there. Here's Newman taking a shot and knocked away at the last second from Scotty Washington. Devon Graves, a safety who has to play corner because of all the injuries for the Wolfpack, was there. And got a piece of the football. And a great job by Graves, too, extending against the six foot five Washington, who's such a handful on those vertical jump balls. Slightly underthrown, but a nice play defensively by the converted safety. Newman has accounted for four touchdowns. He's run for two, thrown for two. He hands it off here. It's Ken Walker, the true freshman, down to the 15 for five yards. And a timeout called here by Wake Forest, two remaining for the Demon Deacons. Third down coming up. Time now for today's Wendy's Weekend Watch. Mentioned Florida, Georgia coming up at 3.30. Here are the games on our networks. Miami, Florida State on ABC, pair of 500 teams. Auburn coming off its second loss of the season at home against Ole Miss. North Carolina, Virginia, uh, Virginia our ACC Network primetime game. That's a good one. ACC primetime, Virginia, Carolina, of course, on ABC, SMU and Memphis. Really good game there on ACC Network in Virginia, North Carolina. Winner going to have the inside track the ACC Coastal to potentially get to the ACC Championship game. You see Brandy and Kevin Surratt kind of be so proud of what their sons have done here in the state of North Carolina. Sage here at Wake Forest being so elite as the X receiver and then Chaz Surratt. The old quarterback to linebacker transition. <laughs> Who doesn't make that one? And man, Everybody he is, does that. <laughs> everybody wants to do that, exactly. Uh, he has done a great job, too, and has been a big reason for the turnaround there under Mack Brown and Chapel Hill. Here's Newman on third down. Pass over the middle, incomplete. No flags. Chapman, the intended receiver. So it's fourth down and five, and Wake Forest will settle for three. Well, there's a little bit of contact. Jakeen Harris... Had a penalty that extended the drive a little earlier. There, a little contact, but I think it was a good no call just seeing where the ball was thrown. It's going to be way out of the reach. It's a good job there by the official keeping the flag in his pocket. Just a reminder there that it's 24 consecutive made field goals for Skiba. Longest active streak in FBS. This is a 34 yard try, and it's true again. So you mentioned about the Surratt parents. They are here, and shortly when the game is over, they'll hop in the car. Nice to have both your sons on Tobacco Road, but 82 miles to Chapel Hill, where they will watch the game tonight. They've got uh, their Carolina gear in the back seat, ready to put on uh, the Carolina blue. This is them this morning arriving in white gear and then showing everybody, look, we got, uh, we got the Chaz. Surratt jersey. Yeah. He's got the sweatshirt. He's still got the hoodie. Clearly, hoodie is, is what he is most comfortable with on game day. He's got one in each color. It's just so awesome 
and they make a quick change in the car and and hit the road. I did find it ironic though in the graphic that their car was Duke Blue in the graphic. I, uh, was it? Uh, it was, yes. In the graphic it was. In real life, no. Neutral color. So I'm glad to see that they didn't go with the Duke Blue color. So that would have been really ironic considering their boys play at both Wake Forest and UNC. Yeah, their car is silver. What's up? <laughs> yeah. oh, that's got to be so fun for them to see their boys having a great time and having great careers. And, and I'll tell you what, they've been a lot of fun to cover here throughout the course of this season. NC State has two timeouts left, but only 23 seconds. So let's see what happens on the kickoff. It's just going to be fair caught by Lassane. Come out to the 25. Kick off your week eight NFL Sunday with ESPN and the ESPN app tomorrow. Sunday NFL countdown, 10 Eastern time. And then Monday night football division rivals Dallas and the Giants at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. And ESPN, ESPN Deportes as well as the ESPN app. Daniel Jones, starting quarterback for the Giants, who are two and six. Dallas, perfect in the division, has struggled outside the NFC East. There's Penix, and he gets a first down. So let's see what Dave Doran decides to do here. Two timeouts left. Clock stops momentarily to move the chains. Well, this is an area that Dave Clawson and his defensive staff are going to have to address at halftime. Some run game troubles here in the second quarter. Leary to throw and fires into traffic. It is caught at the 39-yard line with five seconds left. It was Carter that made the catch. Now they got a good kicker in Christopher Dunn, but he probably needs to get about five or six more yards to get into range. So a timeout's going to be called here. Do you have enough time to throw it quickly to the sideline, get inside the 35, and then give Christopher Dunn an opportunity? We asked Dave Doran this week what his range was. He said about 53. I probably wouldn't because he made one in practice this week from 53. His career long is 49. All right, overall, you, you touched on at the top of the telecast, uh, Jamie Newman. So, folks, if you haven't had a chance to watch him, this is the first time you're seeing him. Yeah. You're seeing a guy that's uh, maybe not just a future star. He's a star right now. He's a star right now, and I think everybody needs to recognize the talent that this guy has. I mean, he's ridiculous. He really is. I think he is as talented as anybody in the ACC, including that of Trevor Lawrence. I know Trevor Lawrence is the guy that everyone thinks, well, first overall, and rightfully so, Trevor Lawrence is going to be a very wealthy man playing quarterback. But don't sleep on Jamie Newman. This guy, because of his explosiveness, because the game has changed, and because of his natural raw skill set, I mean, his future is going to be insanely bright because of that natural throwing ability and the accuracy that he displays. Leary, well, forget the field goal now. Shot to the end zone. Hail Mary at the end of the half. And it's incomplete. A little surprise with five seconds left. They didn't just make a short throw to the sideline and see if they had enough time for a long field goal. It is 34 to 10, Wake Forest at halftime. And the Deacons will get the ball when we start the second half. Right now, Matt Berry, Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway in the studio. It's all Wake Forest here in Winston-Salem. Jamie Newman accounting for four touchdowns, two rushing, two through the air. Deacons lead 34 to 10. With Greg McElroy, I'm Dave Pash, Tom Luganville down on the field. And this is a team to watch here, Greg. Over the next month, they still have to play at Clemson, but nobody should sl uh, sleep on the Deacons the way they're playing. No, they're for real, especially in the offensive side of the football. I mean, they can really spread you out with the excellent wide receivers that they have. They have a dynamic quarterback who's extremely accurate on all throws, really. Outside the numbers, inside the numbers. It can read the middle of the field. So this is a dynamic group offensively that's going to put a lot of defenses in conflict over the next few weeks. And I know you love the way that, uh, that Jamie Newman is playing. And we talked with you know, Dave Clawson yesterday. And look, if Newman's at Oklahoma or Ohio State or LSU or Alabama, he's getting a lot more press. Wake Forest will start with the football. Here's Hinton, and he's tripped up at the 21-yard line. Now let's take a look at today's quick delivery brought to you by DoorDash. Look how quickly Newman gets the ball out of his hands. I mean, two seconds here on the comeback route, beautifully thrown to the outside. A little shorter here on the shorter underneath throw to Surratt, and working him outside the pocket. That ball just jumps out of his hand. 
so effortless, so accurate, with such incredible velocity. He was on fire in the first half and very much in rhythm. Newman back out there for first down on the 21. And he's going to hand it off to Carney, who's tracked down from behind a three-yard loss. Let's check in with Tom. Well, fellas, Dave Doran, obviously disappointed, more so than anything else in the first quarter, because now you're just digging out of a hole. Field position, turnovers, and the inability to stop the run and get off the field for this football team has killed them. And the second quarter, he told me he's really pleased with how Devin Leary's responded. Yeah, Leary looked Solid as Surratt makes the catch. It's going to bring up third down. The problem, as you said, has been NC State defensively. Can they get off the field here? Forces are depleted on defense. They had to play 39 different starters here, uh, starters this year, including Leary. This is his first start at quarterback. Keep an eye on a locked hitch to the top. Surratt. There it is. There it is. And it's a first down catch. Another conversion. Take a look at our first half stats brought to you by Dell Technologies. We already showed you the numbers for Newman. They dominated time of possession, penalties, and turnovers really hurt NC State. They had back-to-back -back turnovers, including one on kickoff that led to a touchdown for Wake. Newman going deep here for Washington, and the throw is on the money. Washington inside the 10. Finally, they drag him down inside the 5. Another perfect throw, 57 yards. Just a beautiful throw up the field. So much air underneath. Off play action. You get that one on one. Washington is out the gate. Really nice big play there for the Demon Deacons. But Washington is hurt, and that could be a huge loss. Maybe not in terms of the impact on today's game, but. He's a guy that is so reliable and is one of Jamie Newman's favorite targets along with Surratt. They're working on his right ankle here, guys, as they look at him on about the two-yard line. And, and Greg, as he tracked that ball, when you watched the direction he was going and then where the ball was actually thrown, he ended up tracking that thing coming back inside. It, when I'm, I was standing on the sideline, it didn't even look like it was going to be caught. Uh, he did a good job of adjusting to the ball that was slightly inside as you see him going down and grabbing that right ankle rolled up awkwardly. We hope Scotty Washington's going to be okay. With the speed of Xfinity XFi, you can stream live games from any corner of the house. Scotty Washington ties a career high with a 59-yard catch, but Jarius Moorhead on the takedown and the injured right ankle of Washington. He walked with some help to the sideline. It is first and goal from the four. Newman rolling out, throwing, and it's a touchdown again for Frudenthal. That is his third touchdown of the game. It's a great design here by the offensive coordinator, Warren Ruggiero. They just keep him kind of locked in right here. You see him right there in the middle of the field. Releases down, captures the edge, and is a late leaker into the flat. It's so sneaky. It's very sneaky. That's a really, really tough thing to cover defensively, especially when you're so concerned with keeping leverage to those initial guys into the flat. Really, really good design and a great touchdown. Wake Forest is now scored on seven of eight possessions in the game. It is 41 to 10. Take a look at our blimp-worthy moment brought to you by Goodyear. It was uh, the game last year, and it was Jamie Newman's first career start. A great finish as the Deacons came from 10 points down in the fourth quarter, scoring a pair of touchdowns as they knocked off then number 14, NC State. Sam Hartman had a season-ending broken leg the week before, which uh, forced Newman into action. And that was just the beginning of something special. How about Frudenthal? He had one touchdown uh, on the season coming in. Three today and four in his career against NC State. Had the game-winning touchdown in that game last year at Raleigh. Say 80% touchdown rates, pretty good clip. Yeah. Against one opponent. Frudenthal's had a nice day, and NC State's had no answer for him inside the five-yard line. 
Lesane again signals for the fair catch. He's done that every time since that first kickoff when he fumbled it inside the 10-yard line. So if you're the North Carolina State coaching staff, Des Kitchings, the offensive coordinator, how are you handling things here with Devin Leary down 31 knowing you're probably not going to win the game? Do you run your offense, or are you still now saying we got to throw it every down to get try, try to get back in this game? You run your offense at this point. It's, you don't want to go all of a sudden to a one-dimensional spot because that makes it easier on the defense. So I think you still run your offense, mix, run, pass. He's going to roll out here, and it is intercepted. Amari Henderson, man, he's got two picks. He could have two more in this game. What a ball hawk. This was a great catch by Henderson, cutting in front of the hitch route. They threw that hitch route time and time and time again in the first half of this football game, especially in the second quarter. Started to see these corners for Wake Forest squatting on those hitch routes underneath. Almost had one earlier, got one there. And a great way to start the second half for the Demon Deacons. He's got four interceptions now on the year. Wake takes over on the 30-yard line. Newman keeping it here and hugs the sideline before he stepped out after a six-yard run. That time it looked like Jamie was just waiting to see what the free rusher was going to do, take me or take the back. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think he chose right as that yeah. back got cleaned up in the backfield. Here's a pitch. To Carney trying to get outside, get, able to get the first down, knocked out of bounds at the 15 yard line. Nine more yards, Kate Carney, senior running back, thousand yard rusher a year ago. So, first down at the 15. Carney. A good tackle, two yards downfield by Tanner Engel. And you just see this offense and the mesh between the running back and the quarterback. Look how long it takes. I mean, it's so lethargic. It almost rocks you to sleep on the defensive side. It really allows you to be right offensively. He's going to keep it here, Newman, inside the 10. I mean, just watching that previous play as he's close to first down, I mean, he's walking forward with him, right? And the offense is essentially, it's... It's no different than triple option. It's no different than watching Army. And to see the quarterback open up, take that first step at 5 o'clock, and start that mesh point at about two yards deep, it's very similar. That's where the handoff actually occurs. Newman keeps it here. As they had Surratt lined up in the backfield, Newman gets the first down. It'll be first and goal. You know, Greg, one of the things, too, that I found interesting when we talked to Wake Forest coaches is how this has helped them in pass protection. Because that slow, long, drawn-out fake, it forces the defense to have to commit to the run. That's your first priority. So how do you convert from run to pass rush so late after Jamie Newman pulls it? Really help limit sacks and pressures on the QB. Newman will throw it here. That's deflected at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete. It's intended for Roberson. It takes a long time, though, but it really allows Jamie Newman, whoever's a quarterback, it allows him to really diagnose what the defense is doing. So the defense really can't be right. If the quarterback makes the correct decision, it can't be right regardless of what the play is called. They fake the jet sweep. Newman in trouble and sacked at the 14-yard line by Drake Thomas. Really the first time today that we've seen a... Really great play from NC State's defense, setting up third and goal from the 13-yard line. You would think probably going to, if they get one-on-one, -on -one, they might try a chance at a fade, but it's like they're going to take a picture. And based on the defensive alignment right here, I wouldn't expect Wake Forest to get too aggressive with this one unless they can find a one-on-one -on -one matchup with one of their talented wide receivers. Maybe they're thinking four-down territory, too, here. See if you can get a chunky yardage here on third down. They are going to run Carney. He makes it back inside the 10 down to about the 8. So it's fourth and goal from the 8. 
And Dave Clawson will send on the kicking team. He thought about it though. Yeah, it's just so hard to convert on third and goal from the 13. I mean, the likelihood of scoring a touchdown is almost smaller than something horrible happening, like an interception that could give momentum back to NC State when a field goal could essentially ice it. Twenty six yard field goal. And the streak continues. Skiba has made 26 in a row, but it all started with the interception by Amari Henderson. And the Demon Deacons continue to roll. They lead 44 to 10. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by the all-new 2020 Lincoln Aviator and Burger King. Get four Cheesy Tots for just a buck for a limited time only at Burger King. The last three bowl games, all wins for Wake Forest and already bowl eligible in 2019. First time in school history that they're bowl eligible for straight years. And just look at what uh, Dave Clawson has done turning this program around. Think about it, they've been predicted to finish fifth or worse in their division, the Atlantic, each of the last six years. And that game at Clemson going to be really interesting in a couple weeks. Touchback, it'll come out to the 25 for NC State. Well, big reason for the big lead for Wake Forest, the turnovers. Here on the kickoff return, Lassane puts it on the deck, and the Deeks recover it inside the five-yard line. Then the overthrow on the post where Amari Henderson can track it, and then the first play of the second half, Amari Henderson squats on that. Hitch route on the boundary. Intercepted football. It's been really tough for NC State today. Made a lot of mistakes. Penalty flag down. A couple coaches came out of the field for NC State as uh, Houston is brought down by Tyler Williams. Illegal formation. Offense. More than four players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. Replay first down. All right, here's Matt Berry in the studio. All right, of course, the big one in the American tonight on ABC, Memphis and SMU. Looked like a great scene at game day. Leary with a long throw off target, going to be third and 11. Wake Forest defensively, number 16 in the country in third down defense. We talked about the game with Clemson a couple weeks ago. That, that's where the challenge is going to be. They might be able to score points against Clemson, but can they stop the Tigers? So good work for the defense here. Leary's pass behind the receiver and almost picked off again, that time by Taylor. That's fourth down. Already got him twice on interceptions and nearly a third. Yeah, fortunate this ball was so off target. The ball was thrown so far <laughs> behind the intended receiver, it was actually behind the guy covering. Two players should have intercepted The it. intended receiver, yeah. PBU there for sure, defensively for Taylor. But had he not gotten a hand on it, Greer was coming right behind him, likely would have grabbed it as well. So fortunate turn of events there for NC State. Hinton is deep. Gill the punt. Said that a lot in this ball game. Good kick. Hinton from the 22. Makes it past the 35. 44 10 Wake. Mayhem begins the college football playoff top 25 ranking show Tuesday at 9 on ESPN. Tonight, catch a top 25 matchup from the American with number 15 SMU taking on Memphis. Tigers one loss, SMU undefeated at 8 0. Great scene for college game day. Corso dressed up as Elvis. <laughs> it was awesome. It was classic. 
He actually got me. He fooled me with uh, the head. I, I thought he was going to put on the Tiger head as Newman still in the game takes off here and he gets creamed at the 40 yard line by Wilson. Remember he's got a bad left shoulder. It'd be interesting to see how long the coaching staff keeps him in the game. Yeah he's got to get down here. Tried to. You see him land on that left shoulder as he was tackled. Kind of grimacing too a little bit. Things dangling a little bit on him. Run play here. Walker tackled for loss. I mean obviously he's healthy enough to play but he does have a wrap on that left shoulder and you wonder at this point is there really a need to keep him in the game. Yeah don't subject him to any exposure in regards to hits. I mean I think just hand it off. You want to keep playing and they tried to hit a shot play on the first down but I don't think the plan is to keep him in the run game at least involved at this point to expose him knowing that he's not at 100 percent. And you got him at you got Virginia Tech on the road next week. Not an easy game. Tough game. And, and then you have Duke excuse me at Clemson Duke at home at Syracuse. So you're done with your buys three of the next four on the road. Third and eleven Walker hurdles a defender and has a first down. The true freshman who they're really high on here at Wake went up in the air and picked up 13 yards. Yeah, he is really quick. And he's done a nice job filling in and spelling Cade Carney, who's the bell cow back, and with Christian Beal Smith not being available, it's going to be really important for Kenneth Walker to continue to grow and, and improve. Newman keeping it here and heading out of bounds. Didn't want to take another shot. Is being chased by Powell. You know, that Kenneth Walker, he, he's an upgrade over Carney, Greg, I think. And, you know, one of the few freshmen, they want to redshirt over 70% of every class, which they're able to do. But when you have a freshman that's talented enough to help you, I think it's validation of where this program is right now that you're now getting the caliber of player that can contribute as a freshman. NC State jumped into the neutral zone, but there was no contact. That was Engle. He got back on side. Wake taking the play clock down here to one. Newman's pass. Oh, what a catch by Claude. Great grab by Claude. Got a foot down. Yeah, that was a heck of a heck of a play by Claude. One of the few inaccurates we've seen today from Jamie Newman off the mark but Claude makes it right you see that right foot get down in bounds really close take another look at it here does look as though he's in good job by the officials on the lot on the sideline look at third down nine of 13 for Wake Forest on third down most of those through the air gonna run it here though to Walker does a great job to cut back, find the hole, and get the first down. So it's a first down. Let's go to Matt Berry in the studio. So it's all BC up at the dome. Been a rough year for Syracuse. High expectations after a great year last year. Meanwhile, Wake rolling here, 44-10 over NC State. Newman throws a deep ball and led the receiver Surratt out of bounds. You have to wonder if that hit that Newman took on first down on this drive has him feeling a little uncomfortable because his last two throws you can make a case for maybe his least accurate throws of the entire game. That one way out of bounds, probably five or six yards out of bounds, not giving Surratt a chance. And here was the hit I was describing. You see him kind of grimace in pain. You wonder if that left arm is hurting badly enough to affect his accuracy because it looks like it might be based on these last couple attempts. NC State blitzing, Newman in trouble, and sacked. Again, if you're Dave Clawson, you got to be thinking this is his last possession. Yeah, you're up 34. I know there's still five minutes to go on the third, but it ain't worth it, is it? No. Uh, he means too much to the team. And 
understand that you want him to keep playing and, and more reps is always a good thing. Remember, I mean, Jamie Newman is still a developmental player. He's in his fourth year, but he's still a raw talent that can use more reps. He hasn't started a million games. So game reps are invaluable, but I think exposing him to hits is not what they want to do at this point. Third and 16, and he overthrows Claude. Almost got tangled up in the kicking net there. And may have. Needs a little help up, but there's three overthrows on that drive, and now it's fourth down. And those are throws he was making in the first half, to your point. That was a really difficult throw there, though, and almost got it in there, but not a lot of room. Not much room. He's not real happy with himself as he heads to the sideline. So Dom Maggio, Berman would have a field day, right? But Dom Maggio <laughs> is the, the, the punter. There, Thomas is back. Penalty flag is down. And fair caught around the nine. During the kick, holding. Receiving team number 19 half the distance to the goal first down so that's on Cecil Powell That's going to put the ball at the five-yard lines take you back to a couple weeks ago Here's the injury that was suffered against Louisville in a three-point loss now Hartman came in He did uh, Newman stay in for one more play Sam Hartman came in and then he started Against Florida State two weeks ago. Here's the head by Jane, against Jamie Newman, and this was a play where he led with the right shoulder because he wants to be careful with that left shoulder. The other thing too is, I mean, he, Sam Hartman, who is the backup, they, they want to try to redshirt him, so he's played two games as that pass is incomplete. Do you want to risk, you know, having to use a third game here and burn a redshirt later in the year if something happens? I mean, Hartman, I know you like him, and he's played pretty well. They also have a sophomore and Tavon Bowers they could put in the game. Yeah, I really like Hartman. I think he's a really good player and has a chance as he continues to grow and develop to to be a great one here in Winston-Salem as well. But I don't think in a game like this with the game so out of hand that you'd want to use another game with that four-game redshirt rule. Incomplete. Larry tried to hit Houston out of the backfield, so it's third and ten. Not to mention you, you know what you have with Hartman, too. He started nine games a year ago, threw for 2,000 yards. Uh, don't blow that red shirt here when you have an opportunity to gain another year of eligibility. There, there's other quarterbacks on the roster that can get you out of a game with this type of score. Yeah, and it gives you an opportunity to evaluate your other guys as well in yep. a real game, ACC type of environment. So Sam Hartman, do not expect to see him today as Bowers is getting prepared on the sideline. Might be coming in here, third and ten. NC State minus one yard here in the second or the third quarter as Larry is hit, but what a strong throw to Amezi. Give the freshman Devin Leary credit there, a credit hanging in in the middle of the end zone while taking a shot from Jaquez Williams. Yeah, he knew that that additional rusher was coming. He hung in there, he anticipated the throw, and he put it on the money. He's definitely made a couple mistakes today, but that one was just how you draw it up. Leary hit again. Pass incomplete. He's getting smoked right now. That was Shamar McCollum, a true freshman. Yeah, and they're going to do a twist on the left side of the offensive line. And the offensive line, true freshman over there. Iquanu and Skullthorpe not passing off that twist. As a result, his quarterback is wearing it. This offensive line has certainly had their fair share of struggles this year. Have lost a couple key players as well. Just haven't executed anywhere near where they did over the last couple years, and that's a big reason why their offense hasn't been as consistent. Quick throw in space, and there is Amari Henderson, a tackle for a loss. Let's go to Matt in the studio. UCF trying to get to 7-2 and two on the year. you got to be proud of Houston, though, putting up a fight. I mean, after 
after De'Eric King and, and his wide receiver decide to, to redshirt and not play this year, they're still fighting, man. I give credit to those guys still out there for the coach. Leary avoids a sack on third down and 12. Running the ball. Oh, he got smacked, but he got the first down. Ryan Smenda with a big hit, but if you're head coach Dave Dorn, you got to be encouraged. This is Devin Leary's first start. They, they, they want him to be the guy. He's the third quarterback they've started this year, but they really want Leary to step up and be the man. And a good job moving in the pocket there, stepping up and escaping out to his left, understanding how many yards he needed to pick up the first, putting his shoulder down and converting. Run play here on first down that's going to go for about three. I mean, they're so used to having good players at that position. Ryan Finley last year, who's now starting this week for the Bengals. But Leary's the first redshirt freshman starting quarterback since Russell Wilson here at NC State back in 2008. There's Bailey Hockman. He started a couple games. Matthew McKay was the starter at the beginning of the year. But the coaching staff wants Devin Leary to be the starter for the next four years. Here he is on second down and seven off a of pump fake and throws a completion to the tight end Angeline who's into Wake territory and out of bounds at the 40 yard line. Gain of 27. And a nice job here on the throw. I mean, holds up Angeline. Angeline goes vertical. It's a really nice throw and it's a nice little drive here from Leary getting back in rhythm. Gonna throw it again here. And throws that one to Henderson. Did he get a foot down? No. That would have been his third interception of the game. And he had two more that he got his hands on. He thinks he got a foot down. I'm telling you, that right foot is really close. He goes vertical. And the receiver from NC State almost hits him and brings him down. Oh, did oh it's so close. Is that right foot on the ground right Ooh, there? How about the left foot? Did the left foot actually hit inbounds when he went to the ground? He got hit, but he may have even gotten the left foot down. Now they stop play. I'm with you. I was looking at the right foot, but then when he got hit, he may have actually Absolutely dragged the, the left. Incomplete pass. The previous play is on the further review. This was a play where he led with the right shoulder because... He wants to be careful with that left shoulder. The other thing, too, is I mean, he, Sam Hartman, who is the backup, they, they want to try to redshirt him. So he's played two games as that pass is incomplete. Do you want to risk, you know, having to use a third game here and burn a redshirt later in the year if something happens? I mean, Hartman, I know you like him, and he's played pretty well. They also have a sophomore and Tavon Bowers they could put in the game. Yeah, I really like Hartman. I think he's a really good player and has a chance as he continues to grow and develop to to be a great one here in Winston-Salem as well. But I don't think in a game like this with the game so out of hand that you'd want to use another game with that four-game redshirt rule. Incomplete. Leary tried to hit Houston out of the backfield, so it's third and ten. Not to mention you, you know what you have with Hartman, too. He started nine games a year ago, threw for 2,000 yards. Uh, don't blow that red shirt here when you have an opportunity to gain another year of eligibility. There, there's other quarterbacks on the roster that can get you out of a game with this type of score. Yeah, and it gives you an opportunity to evaluate your other guys as well in yep. a real game, ACC type of environment. So Sam Hartman, do not expect to see him today as Bowers is getting prepared on the sideline. Might be coming in here, third and ten. NC State minus one yard here in the second or the third quarter as Leary is hit, but what a strong throw to Amezi. Give the freshman Devin Leary credit there, a credit hanging in in the middle of the end zone while taking a shot from Jaquez Williams. Yeah, he knew that that additional rusher was coming. He hung in there, he anticipated the throw, and he put it on the money. He's definitely made a couple mistakes today, but that one was just how you draw it up. Leary hit again. Pass incomplete. He's getting smoked right now. That was Shamar McCollum, a true freshman. Yeah, and they're going to do a twist on the left side of the offensive line. And the offensive line, true freshman over there. Iguanu and Skullthorpe not passing off that twist. As a result, his quarterback is wearing it. This offensive line has certainly had their fair share of struggles this year. Have lost a couple key players as well. Just 
haven't executed anywhere near where they did over the last couple years, and that's a big reason why their offense hasn't been as consistent. Quick throw out in space, and there is Amari Henderson, a tackle for a loss. Let's go to Matt in the studio. UCF trying to get to 7-2 and two on the year. You got to be proud of Houston, though, putting up a fight. I mean, after after De'Eric King and, and his wide receiver side to, to redshirt and not play this year, they're still fighting, man. Got to give credit to those guys still out there for the Cougs. Leary avoids a sack on third down and 12. Running the ball. Oh, he got smacked, but he got the first down. Ryan Smend with a big hit, but... Your head coach Dave Dorn, you got to be encouraged. This is Devin Leary's first start. They 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 want him to be the guy. He's the third quarterback they've started this year, but they really want Leary to step up and be the man. And a good job moving in the pocket there, stepping up and escaping out to his left, understanding how many yards he needed to pick up the first, putting his shoulder down and converting. Run play here on first down that's going to go for about three. I mean, they're so used to having good players at that position. Ryan Finley last year, who's now starting this week for the Bengals. But Leary's the first redshirt freshman starting quarterback since Russell Wilson here at NC State back in 2008. There's Bailey Hockman. He started a couple games. Matthew McKay was the starter at the beginning of the year. But the coaching staff wants Devin Leary to be the starter for the next four years. Here he is on second down and seven off a pump fake and throws a completion to the tight end Angeline who's into Wake territory and out of bounds at the 40 yard line. Gain of 27. And a nice job here on the throw. I mean, holds up Angeline. Angeline goes vertical. It's a really nice throw and it's a nice little drive here from Leary getting back in rhythm. Gonna throw it again here. And throws that one to Henderson. Did he get a foot down? No. That would have been his third interception of the game. And he had two more that he got his hands on. He thinks he got a foot down. I'm telling you, that right foot is really close. He goes vertical. And the receiver from NC State almost hits him and brings him down. Oh, oh the, it's so close. Is that right foot on the ground right ooh, there? How about the left foot? Did the left foot actually hit inbounds when he went to the ground? He got hit, but he may have even gotten the left foot down. Now they stop play. I'm with you. I was looking at the right foot, but then when he got hit, he may have actually the dragged the, the left. Incomplete pass. The previous play is on the further review. So the ruling in the field was confirmed. It, it was not an interception, incompletion, but still Henderson has two picks. Tackle for a loss. You see the hand out of bounds. Yeah, the hand hits just before the left foot hits. And the left foot was in bounds. It's just the hand was out. It was a heck of an athletic play by Amari Henderson, almost intercepting his third pass of the day. Senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. State going to keep it on the ground here with Justin Houston. Picks up a couple yards. Brought down by Chase Monroe. So third down and long. And those are the little blips I think you're going to have to eliminate from Devin Leary because right there he throws in a double coverage. You don't have to take that chance. Threw in a double coverage earlier on the first interception on the post. So he's got to continue to be smart with the football. And this is not a team right now that's built to overcome catastrophic mistakes at the quarterback spot. Especially on defense, too, when they've been so poor at forcing turnovers and getting the ball back for the offense. Houston running it on third down and long. He's only going to get a couple. We'll see if NC State goes for it here. Fourth down at about seven, and you would imagine they would at this point, down 44-10. I know fourth and seven's asking a lot, but what do you have to lose? Yeah, 100%. I mean, it's absolutely four down territory. How do your guys respond? In a critical down and distance, a guy that's been a little quiet today for NC State has been Thayer Thomas. Only got two targets today, but you would expect him to be the guy on a critical down and distance here on fourth down. This is all about the development of Devin Leary. Can he make a play here on fourth down? There's a penalty flag down. Offense, oh. number 74. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. So, again, penalties continue to be an issue. He made the point 
about Dave Dorn and his demeanor on the sideline doing a lot of encouraging. He knows after back to back nine win seasons that with all the injuries they've had this year is about developing the young guys. He's got NC State in a, in a good spot overall as a program just got to get through this season. Yeah I just had so much adversity this year almost too much to overcome. So fourth and 11 for Leary and good play defensively again by Amari Henderson on the receiver Imezi. But Henderson is having a heck of a day Been targeted here really tight coverage see his length though as he knocks the ball away give the ball back to his offense tonight the UFC is at MSG and it features the card of the year with the main event on pay-per-view starting at 10 Eastern Jorge Masvidal takes on Nate Diaz in a welterweight battle to order the main card in English and Spanish go to ESPN plus.com slash PPV you can catch the prelims at 8 on ESPN 2, ESPN Deportes. So Michael Kern is actually the guy that they bring in at quarterback. They had a couple of, of options, and they go with Kern, and he hands it off. Gain of only one for Kenneth Walker. And this is an invaluable opportunity for Michael Kern. I mean, true freshman taking advantage of this red shirt rule. It's got to be fun for him to be out there competing with his teammates. End of three in Winston-Salem. Wake Forest on its way to a 7-1 and one record. Welcome back. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Dave Pass, Greg McElroy, Tom Luganbill in Winston-Salem. And don't forget tonight, top-ranked boxing main event for the WBC Junior Lightweight title. Miguel Burchelt defending his belt for the sixth time against former WBA Super Featherweight champ Jason Sosa, 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific from Carson, California. Freshman quarterback Michael Kern in the game and dumps it off to Walker, who gets back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe an additional yard. Wake Forest leading 44-10. Jamie Newman is done for the day, the outstanding junior quarterback who came in 10th in the country in passing yards first in the ACC and he threw for three touchdowns in the ball game finishing with 286 yards he also ran for two scores yeah, he's sensational man I mean just so much talent a little bit banged up need to get him healthy for the stretch run to a couple hits on that left shoulder here late so glad to see him on the sideline frankly knowing that his best football needs to be in front of him if Wake Forest is going to do some serious damage Kern's pass caught in traffic close to the first down by Waydale Jones would be his first catch of the year. I mean, Newman's got a shot to get 3,500 passing yards. He's over 2,000. That's and missing a game. I mean, right. And missing some time, too, against Louisville. So he is the real deal, man. I mean, I, I think just as far as sheer talent is concerned. Now, he's not quite as polished as some of the other guys that are likely to get their names called in the top five of the NFL draft. That's a good thing, though, Greg. I think it's okay. I yeah. think that raw ability is something that NFL teams really covet, and, and he has it. This guy's a first-round pick for sure to me. You have a high ceiling for development. That's always something that's going to be coveted. No doubt. It's a matter of just where he ends up and what situation he goes into, but I think he's a first-rounder, no question about it. Damaggio punting again, and it's fair caught by Thomas inside the 10. Mayhem begins this Tuesday on ESPN with the college football playoff top 25 presented by Allstate. Here are the picks for Greg and Tom. And uh, inside, insane minds think alike. You look at uh, the top four <laughs> the same. The only difference is uh, Greg has Florida, Tom has Oregon among the first two out. I think Oregon's really good. I think they might have some have some difficulties tonight with a USC team that is really explosive at the wide receiver position. They struggled last week against Washington State, and SC is Washington State on steroids with how they run the air raid and the personnel they have. So, Lugs, I, your number six team might be in a bit of trouble tonight. Yeah, and I'll tell you, those kids are playing their tail off for their coach. And, and I think that's something. There's a lot of pride right now with that SC team. Uh, they kind of gotten better and better and better. Hasn't been easy. I mean, you look at the quarterback situation, the new offense, injuries under center, uh, not a great defensive football team. You, you love Drake Jackson. You love Jay Tufele along the front. 
but it's how that team has played for their coach, who's been much maligned, obviously, over the last 15 months. Yeah, I actually think they're going to upset Oregon tonight. I, I really do. I, I think that Oregon's defense was great through the first six games of the year and hasn't necessarily been up to the standard these last couple weeks. So I think SC's got a real shot tonight to pull off the upset. Run play here and a fumble. And Houston able to fall on it. Is there a team? Because there always is a team that's outside the top 10 or outside the top 15 that we're not giving enough. Come on, right here, right in front of you, Wake Forest. So you think. It, what it, game are you broadcasting, Dave? <laughs> well, no, no, but you're saying that Wake Forest is going to beat Clemson. No, because they I, have but to. I'm saying that if they do, they have a chance. Well, yeah, if they and beat Clemson in no, in Clemson. I think most people would say, no, no way Wake Forest has a chance. When you look at it, an 11-1 North Carolina team in 2015 was an onside kick away from potentially going to the college football player. The defense gets after Leary here, and they get a sack. So you, you got to, first of all, look at you know their best win. What's their best win? They North don't Carolina. have a great win. Okay, North Carolina. Now, if they beat Clemson, that'll be their best win. But Correct. you're in the ACC, even if you win, even if you win out, you win the ACC championship with one loss. Are you going to beat out a second SEC team? There, there are some oranges here. They're actually some Orange Bowl representatives, and seven and one if they hang on here, which they will, obviously, be their best record since they went to the Orange Bowl in 2006. But I, I think it's a really tall order. And to it's, think that Wake they is need get. a ton of help. I mean, they need a ton of help. Penn State, you mentioned two SEC teams. There could be two Big Ten yeah, teams with absolutely. Penn State as well. So yep. Oklahoma's got one loss. Baylor's undefeated. There's a million teams that would be in front of them. But they're going to be in the conversation. If they beat Clemson and they win the ACC as a Power 5 champion with only one loss, and that one loss by three points and your quarterback got hurt in that game, Wake Forest is going to have an argument. It's going to be a fun game tonight on ABC with SMU looking to go to 9-0. It hasn't happened since 82 when they beat Pitt in the Cotton Bowl, finished unbeaten. And uh, they got Memphis tonight. The Tigers have one loss. Then they got a really good offense. They're ranked 10th in the country in scoring. SMU is ranked 6th in the nation. So a lot of points expected in Memphis. Well, of course, they'll have on the Elvis gear again as that pass is tipped <laughs> at the line of scrimmage by Peyton Wilson. I'm telling you, man, I, I love that SMU team. I think Bouchelle is excellent, especially on downfield throwing. I think he's got a really nice set of wide receivers. Curious to see if Roberson's going to be available. He got injured in last week's game, so love to see him at 100%. Xavier Jones, excellent back for the Mustangs. And I just love that a lot of those guys are getting second chance. A lot of them are transfers, didn't work out somewhere else. Heck, even for their head coach, Sonny Dykes, didn't work out at Cal. It's a new opportunity and has taken advantage of it. Couldn't be happier for what's going on there in Highland Park for, for the SMU faithful. Walker picks up about four, so let's look at the AP rankings by conference. As of Tuesday, we're going to go by the college football playoff rankings, but you've got six in the Big Ten, five in the SEC, and in the AAC, you have three. It's Notre Dame that obviously is ranked. Uh, Appalachian State probably falls out of the rankings this week. It's amazing yeah. that the ACC only has two. You know, I mean, it was only a few three, four, five years ago, 2015 or 16, where you could have made the case that the ACC was the best league top to bottom with so many great quarterbacks, but just hasn't been the same these last couple of years. No Florida State, no Miami in the rankings. Both are four and four, and they play each other today. Kern's pass is incomplete going for Claude. I think the misconception, though, with the ACC is that it's a bad league. So I don't think it is. You have an elite championship contender, and then you have a really good Wake Forest team who I think is for real. And then you have about eight or nine teams that are likely to go bowling. So tell me, is a team that has, or a league that has potentially 12 bowl teams out of their 14 member institutions, is that a bad league? No. I think it's just because you have Miami, Florida State, and Virginia Tech, three teams that have been a big part of the conference's success the last 15 years having, you know, down seasons. Line drive punt. And the fair catch is made at the 11 by Tabari Hines. ESPN College Football is presented by Xfinity. Get the ultimate in-home Wi-Fi experience with Xfinity XFi. And in part by Cheez-It, official sponsor of the college football playoff. 
A beautiful day here in Winston Salem and great opportunity for young kids to just hang out on the lawn here under the scoreboard at BB and T field. It's been a rough day for NC State with three turnovers and 72 penalty yards and the Wolfpack going to fall to 0 and 4 on the road. That's what happens with young teams. I mean, it, keeping your poise on the road when things start to go a little sideways. And those four losses are going to be by around 100 points. Houston running to the right gets maybe one. They lost at West Virginia, Florida State, and BC by a total of 56 points. They're plus 86 at home. And we talked a lot about the injuries and backups, three different quarterbacks starting. Back-to-back -back nine win seasons for the first time since 1991-92. The last time they had 18 wins in a two-year stint. So a total of 18 wins, not nine and nine, but 18 wins. Phillip Rivers, 2002-2003. So NC State's in a good place overall. It's just a matter of can they get through this year and get to a bowl. They'll be four and four after this game. And a bowl game would be huge. I mean, just for all the young guys, those additional 15 practices would be enormous for their development. So... That has to be the goal. I know that that's far short of the expectations that we all have for NC State football in the years to come, and I think they're going to be a lot better down the road because of the experience that these guys have gotten. But it's been tough sledding this year for the Wolfpack. Incomplete pass on third and long, so NC State's going to punt again. Fourth down, NC State. Number 14, Sadie Shrine, back just have to think with, with NC State, though, and their development, and the way they can identify personnel, and the way they've identified quarterbacks. I think Leary's going to be a really good player as he continues to progress, learning how to become more professional about his approach and, and being smart and cerebral with the football. But there's a lot of young talent on this team that in a perfect world be, would be redshirting, forced into action, and might accelerate their development down the road, though, that's for sure. This Wolfpack team's going to be pretty exciting here. And, 2021 or 2022, that's for sure. Surratt signaling for the fair catch, and he has it at the 46 with Wake Forest in front, 44 to 10. Tonight, after top ranked boxing, catch Sports Center with Michael Eaves and Zubin Mahenti. All the post fight coverage from UFC 244. And reaction from Alvarez Kovalev, boxing title fight, Herbie's biggest takeaways from week 10, Sports Center after boxing on ESPN, and of course the ESPN app. Maybe even a look ahead to some of the games next week in college football. Wake Forest running it on first down, and Delaney has stood up for no gain. Of course, the big one next week, game day, it will be in Tuscaloosa, LSU, and Alabama. Clemson is at NC State. That uh, will be our ABC primetime game. And you also have Minnesota hosting Penn State. That game could shake things up in the college football playoff rankings, which uh, will come out on Tuesday night. I think just to mess with everybody, they should send SEC Nation on SEC Network to Minnesota. What do you think? <laughs> That'd be good. <laughs> that would be a first. Since game days in Tuscaloosa, you know, send them on the road. Undefeated teams. It's going to be a good matchup, I think. I think yeah. Minnesota's playing good football. Another run play to Delaney, and he pushes the pile out past midfield. Let's go to Matt Berry in the studio. No question, Nebraska has been a disappointment this year. Based on the expectations, they played better second half of last year. Those are lofty expectations. I think they were though. way too lofty. Yeah, I mean, they to his eight. eight, they were four and eight, and and they played. They scored a lot more points in the final six games, and they were a lot more competitive. But anyone that suggested they were a ten win team or in that vicinity, I just had a hard time believing it. And Adrian Martinez being banged up hasn't helped them either. Okay, that's fair, but you wouldn't say that they're a disappointment this year. No, they are. I think to, to assume that right now they're. And they have a possibility of falling below 500. Yeah, I mean, I would say they're definitely a disappointment in an ever-improving Big Ten West. But it's a better league, though. I think it's a yeah. better division than I think most of us forecasted. Sure. I thought it would be pretty good. 
I didn't expect Minnesota to be this good. And Minnesota's schedule, though, is just perfectly set up for it them. It is. They got, a, they got a long way to go. Yeah. If you look at no, uh, November for Minnesota, oh. Oh. Penn State, Wisconsin, and Iowa in a four-week span. Well, and you also have in the East, you know, Ohio State. I know you guys both have them number one, and I'm with you right now, although I don't think that's where they're going to be ranked on Tuesday night. I, I think we all think they're the best team in the country, but as uh, that's a great kick that goes out of bounds uh, around the one yard line but they still have to play Penn State and they still have to go to Michigan and then the Big Ten Championship game if they get there. Let's take a look at this week's AP rankings brought to you by Goodyear. Again the college football playoff top 25 will be revealed on Tuesday. That'll be the rankings we use. One of those weeks <laughs> the Big Ten teams are off. Most of the SEC is off with the exception of Georgia Florida. Got some good games in the Pac-12. You know, we talked about Oregon. Utah is still in the playoff yeah. conversation. Utah does not control their own destiny in the Pac-12, though, which is insane to me because SC at 5-3 and three beat Utah head-to-head, -head, meaning they have the half-game lead in the Pac-12 South. So Utah might be 11-1 potentially and sitting on their couch championship Saturday. And, okay, so to that point, as uh, Larry throws a deep ball here, it's overshot and complete. If, if Utah... If there's some craziness that happens, let's, let's see first of all where Utah is ranked this week when, when the playoff rankings come out. But let's say there's some craziness in, in the SEC over the next few weeks, right? And Utah is a one-loss team that doesn't play for a conference championship. Now, we're not talking about Alabama and the SEC. We're talking about Utah and the Pac-12. Can they make the playoff? No, they have no. to win their league. Uh, they have to. Uh, and they have to be 12-1, and one, frankly, to have a conversation. And I, I think their win... And the Pac-12 championship game really has to come against an 11-1 Oregon team, too. And it's going to need that much to happen for, I think, a Pac-12 team to get in because I think most of us would still have a one-loss Penn State team potentially ahead of Utah, a one-loss Alabama or LSU potentially ahead of Utah. So Pac-12 is a better league than people give them credit, but still got a lot of work to do to get to the college football playoff. Matt Berry, what you got? Second down. Notre Dame trying to bounce back from that loss against Michigan. Aren't you guys a little bit curious, too, as to how the college football playoff committee will view Clemson? Yeah. That's going to be interesting to me. Houston wow. upended at the 19-yard line. Yeah, I mean, you guys have, have a four, right, in your uh, playoff rankings? How about that? Mm going aerial. I think it's going to be interesting. The team I'm most fascinated to see where they rank is frankly Penn State because you can make a real clear argument because they beat Michigan. They beat Iowa on the road. Those are two wins that are better than any win that Alabama or Clemson has. Sure. So you can make a case that Penn State should be as high as three even though I still think they'll be five behind Alabama and Clemson who I think might be three and four respectively. Pass is incomplete. It's fourth down. Well, the AP this week flipped LSU and Alabama. Do you think the college football top 25, you know, the playoff top 25 will be LSU one or Alabama one? LSU will be one. Ohio State will be two. I think Bama will be three. The problem is Bama hasn't beaten anybody yet of significance. Their best win is against Texas A&M. And Texas A&M is not a team right now that's, that's playing elite football, whereas LSU has a win on the road early against Texas, and I don't think that win's going to hold up. I think Texas is falling back to earth quite a bit. But they've also beaten Auburn. They've also beaten Florida. LSU has the most impressive resume to this point. Sage Surratt is deep. Excellent punt. Surratt fields it over the shoulder. And goes down, but not without a fight after a 59-yard punt. It was the Jamie Newman show before giving way to Michael Kern here in the fourth quarter. He beat the blitz with a beautiful throw to the end, getting the ball out of his hand, surveying the entire field, working one in the progression, back all the way over to number two, and throwing a strike, and then allowing his legs to force the defense into a tough spot. Man coverage, he escapes. He is an excellent player and a big reason why the Demon Deacons have put together one of the best 
seasons so far in their program's history. Responsible for five touchdowns, three passing. So Newman now has five rushing touchdowns, 20 passing touchdowns, a touchdown pass in 11 straight games, which ties the school record. He is number 10 in the country in passing yards, number seven in total offense. Leads the ACC in both categories, ahead, of course, of Trevor Lawrence of Clemson. The two will square off, so to speak, when they play at Clemson in two weeks. It'll be a really interesting game. Clemson's playing better. They had that close game against North Carolina. All that did was make them mad. Yeah, Clemson's really good. <laughs> They're going to have to play excellent football to get the upset win on the road, but Ooh. their quarterback balls out. They certainly have a chance. Kern just got pasted by uh, Peyton Wilson. It will also be interesting to see Clemson's front defensively uh, against this backfield action and, and, you know, the slow reads. I think that's one of the things, Greg, that we talked about in a break earlier in the game is if there's one thing that can throw a grenade on it, it's front pressure. Yeah, a great defensive line, I think. It's really tough to neutralize this offense the way they do things. They just make you wrong defensively because of how long they ride the meshes in the run game and all their great personnel at wide receiver. But if you have a great disruptive defensive line, that's the one thing that I think could really throw a wrench in the equation for the Wake Forest offense. And Wake just going to keep it on the ground here in third down. Delaney gets back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. So it'll bring up fourth down with Wake Forest in command here. Now we have a timeout. I'm not sure. Oh, injured player back in a moment. Javiante Nash shaken up for Wake Forest. Backup offensive lineman as the Demon Deacons have been able to get their two some work here. They're about to punt the ball. They lead NC State 44-10. Wake will improve to seven and one, three and one in league play. It'll be the first time that they've won seven of their first eight games since 2006. It's the first time entering November with only one loss since 06. Jim Grobe was the head coach then. Went to the Orange Bowl that year. Maggio is the punter. A line drive here on the 40-yard line. Hines. Into Wake territory, but a flag down. Hines still going, and finally knocked down to the 30, but this likely will come back. During the return, illegal block in the back. Return team, number 21. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. All right, instant gif. What do you think? <laughs> a lot of somersaults. Yeah, it's flips. It's pretty amazing. I mean, pretty acrobatic. What's better? Ooh. I, I think I like that one. I think I, I like... I think Which I one? Like, There's two of them. <laughs> I think I like the one involving Jordan Houston. The running back for NC State. I think that's the one I prefer, even though both pretty wild. Devin Leary staying in the game, a quarterback. And they're just going to run it. Let's go to Matt Berry in the studio after no game. All right, thanks for keeping us up to date on that game. About three minutes to go here. NC State will fall to four and four. Wake will improve to seven and one. Another run play. And Dabs brought down at the 43. All right, here are the remaining undefeated FBS teams. Baylor won on Thursday night against West Virginia. Penn State, Minnesota next week. SMU plays Memphis tonight. Bama LSU next week. Ohio State is off. Clemson is playing Wofford today. Of those teams, which is the most likeliest to get knocked off the soonest? Obviously, LSU and Bama play each other. Well, obviously, SMU playing tonight. And well, the no, most of those teams are idle. 
I said which has the best chance to get knocked off the first. Doesn't mean just because SMU is playing that they have the best chance. I think they have the best chance they of also getting knocked off Without question. First. You like you guys like Memphis tonight? I do. I, I you know SMU's given up 27 points five times or more. They've given up in the 40s. I I think that's kind of a Big 12 a diet Big 12 game, Big 12 light. Whoever gets the ball last, whoever can get one or two stops. But uh, SMU defensively has given up a lot of points. I actually like SMU. Believe it or not, uh, I, I think that Bouchel is. Ex I think Brady White's really good for Memphis as well. There's something about this SMU team, though. I think they're balanced both offensively and defensively. And I look at SMU's defensive numbers. Sure, they've scored. They've given up some points for sure. But I don't think Memphis is great on defense either. So not possessions, man. I think possessions yeah. are big, like you said. Third down defense and red zone defense holding teams to field goals. But I'm going to lean SMU just slightly. There's Leary to throw on second down. It's incomplete. Through the hands of LaSaint. SMU's a great story. Look, Me Memphis is a great story too, but I, I just think given where SMU was as a program after you know the great early 80s and some of the great players that were on those teams and then the death penalty to be back in this position. A chance to go to a New Year's six. Highest ranking group of five will make the trip. Boise's not out of it, even though they lost to BYU. Pass gets away from Leary, so it is fourth down. This final month of the season is going to be really interesting. And just, I mean, you think about just in the ACC, I mean, Wake Forest, you see the oranges begging for another Orange Bowl berth. Very realistic possibility, too. I mean, they finished the season 10 and 2. Clemson, let's assume Clemson gets the college football playoff. Well, they would be more than likely the the next in line to to replace Clemson in the New Year's Six. So very high likelihood if Wake continues to play like they've played today that, that they'll find their way back to a New Year's Six bowl game. And what a job that would be by Dave Clawson. Well, I think it's great as it flags down that the nation, uh, if they really hadn't been paying attention to Wake and Jamie Newman. False start. Offense. Not all 11 players were set. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Now, a lot of diehard college football fans probably knew Wake and, and Dave Clawson good and that Jamie Newman's a good player, but I think more people are being exposed to a quarterback that has an incredible future, and that's why that game against Clemson, they, they have a game in between then, but in two weeks at Clemson could be a show between two outstanding quarterbacks and future first-round picks. So, 107 to go in the fourth quarter. Wake's going to get the ball back. I mean, Virginia Tech's playing Notre Dame, 5-2. and two. That's a tough game in Blacksburg. Virginia Tech's better than they were four yeah. weeks ago, uh -huh. too. I yep. mean, night and day difference with how they're playing the last few weeks. I mean, that Clemson game, it's all about Clemson, really. I mean, it, the one thing that I think has been unique about Wake Forest, they've had an uncanny knack to kind of play to the level of the competition. Today was really refreshing because they came out, they dominated. They played to their standard. They left no doubt. They forced a couple early turnovers. They took advantage of those turnovers with points and touchdowns, and they didn't drop their level of play to NC State. And that wasn't necessarily the case against some of the teams they've beaten here in the first two months of the season. Wake will have to take a knee one more time. How well coached are they, though? I mean, I think that's the thing that we look at the dynamic quarterback. We see that their personnel's gotten better, but they, you know they don't hurt themselves. They don't commit penalties. They don't turn the ball over. All of the things that you have to do fundamentally to be a good team, they do all of them. Yep. And in today's day and age, you got to have a quarterback. Yep. And they have one in Jamie Newman. That's yes, for sure. Yes, they do. Only one penalty today. To your point too about the coaching. That's it. Wake Forest is 7-1 for the first time in 13 years, and they've got a dude at quarterback. Jamie Newman, the ACC leader in passing. Just the fourth time in school history, the Demon Deacons are 7-1. They've got the game in Blacksburg and then at Clemson in two weeks. A team to watch here in November. They throttle NC State 44-10.
For Greg McElroy, Tom Lugan, Bill, our entire outstanding ESPN crew, I'm Dave Pash saying so long from Winston-Salem. Wake Forest, a winner, 44-10. Let's get you now to the studio and Matt Barry.